Hello and welcome. I'm Pooja Shali. The Kashmir Files is a blockbuster film based on the massacre and mob violence faced by the Kashmiri Pandits in the 1990s that eventually led to the exodus of lakhs of Hindus from the valley. The film has now brought the world's attention to this issue and has become a talking point which was deliberately suppressed for years before this. So in this special telecast, I will show you one, the rise of terrorism in the Kashmir Valley from 1989 and then 32 years later, how the Kashmiri Pandits are still fighting for justice, the weight that is still on. From India Today archives, what exactly happened in the 1990s? How did targeted killings of Hindus begin? the mob violence, silent politicians, the collapse of the government in the state and at the center, and then the ethnic cleansing and the genocide of the Kashmiri Hindus. Take a look at this special report from our 1990 India Today archives. Kashmir faced horror in 1947 when Pakistan-backed Kabali invaders attacked the valley. But by 1980s, radicalization and fundamentalism had started to spread unabated. Pakistan-sponsored terrorism was influencing young Muslim men to take up weapons in Kashmir and destroy India. By 1989 in Kashmir, a storm of hatred was spread against the minuscule Hindu minority. Attacks against Hindus and Sikhs started to increase. In 1989, a mob would gather on the streets shouting slogans in support of Pakistan. Slogans then turned, threatening and directed against the minority and Pakistan's influence started to increase. Hindu men and women were intimidated into silence first and then asked not to wear their marks of religious identity. Women specifically were threatened of acid attacks, rape and conversions. On 14th September 1989, Tikalal Taplu was killed in broad daylight. This was the first murder of a popular political voice sending shivers among the scared Hindu minority. The Kashmiri pundits ever since observe 14th September as the Balidan Divas remembering this killing. On 4th November 1989, retired judge Neelkant Ganju was assassinated outside the High Court. He had given the death sentence to JKLF terrorist and founder Makbul Bhatt. On 27th December in South Kashmir's Anantnag, another lawyer, Premnath Bhatt, was gunned down. Targeted killings of Kashmiri Hindus had begun. We have given you a warning that we will kill you. He said that we will kill you for a night. We are not scared, we are Hindustani. The terror outfit behind these Hindu killings was the Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front, the JKLF. The target, non-Muslims, pro-India political voices. The mission, to eventually establish an extremist Islamic mandate. JKLF terrorists on 8 December 1989 had kidnapped Rubaya Saeed. She was the daughter of India's Home Minister, Mufti Mohammad Saeed. But facing political pressure, five terrorists were released by the VP Singh government at the centre. And at the state, the government was led by Farooq Abdullah. I don't want to comment on it. Would the government have acted differently had it not been the Home Minister's daughter? Fish. Cut, cut. I don't know because human being is a human being, girl is a girl. While this incident was unfolding, visuals emerging from Srinagar were horrifying. With the announcement of terrorists' release, 
Srinagar erupted in celebration. Processions were being carried out across the valley. The mob fire spread so fast that minority Hindus started to be targeted even beyond capital city Srinagar. In Anantanag, Sopor, Shopia, minorities were being deliberately and regularly attacked. During this mayhem, JNK's governor was former Indian Army Chief General K.V. Krishna Rao. By December 1989 itself, announcements were being made from mosques and rooftops threatening the Hindus to leave Kashmir and never return. If you don't go from here, we will kill you from your homes. This is the last time for you. While the Kashmiri pundits were being brazenly killed, then Chief Minister Farooq Abdullah was facing allegations of instead playing golf, attending dance and cultural functions, instead of focusing on his duty at such a critical time. By then, on Indian territory, Pakistan poison had spread. The slogans were now direct and shocking. Ralev, Salev, Galev. Convert to Islam or flee or die. Terrorists started to find shelter even in hospitals across Kashmir to avoid action against them. By 19th January 1990, Farooq Abdullah resigned from his CM position. While around him, Hindus were being targeted and killed on a daily basis. Governor Jagmohan was reinstated in Jammu and Kashmir. But after targeting killings and no support since 1989, pundits were fleeing in mass. Jagmohan's appointment came at a time when the establishment had completely broken down in Kashmir. I found a snake pit of uh, chaos and confusion. I also found the total collapse of the administrative machinery, sway of the cult of gun, and there were thousands and thousands of uh, pigeons, frightened pigeons, in the terror, in the cage of uh, terrorism. Pakistan, via its terror recruits on the ground and via media channels PTV, were fueling more hatred from across the border into Kashmir. And with nobody to rescue, by the end of January, Hindu minority was fleeing, huddled in trucks, buses, taxis, by any means possible. They stayed in open in the winter temperature, lived in broken tents, and most families did not even have food available to eat. On 21st January, CRPF opened fire at a communal procession that turned violent, leading to the death of more than 50 Kashmiris. Meanwhile, Hindus who had stayed back started to be now killed more brazenly. Doordarshan director Lassa Kaul was killed in February and finally by April, after torture and skinned bodies of Sarvanand Kaul Premi and his son were found hanging from the tree by the terrorists, Kashmir was emptied out of its original inhabitants, the Kashmiri pundits. Till 2000, lakhs of pundits had left and the forced exodus continues. By 2022, now less than 800 families are left in Kashmir, scattered and most living alone in localities. Kashmiri pundits today struggle to retain their unique religious identity while their killers are free and unaffected. Farooq Ahmed Dar, also known as terrorist Bitta Karate, 
He was the man who terrorized Kashmir for years. So who was Bitta Karate? Who did he kill? And how did he play a major role in the genocide of the Kashmiri Hindus? These words by terrorist Bitta Karate became the face of terrorism in Kashmir. Farooq Ahmed Dar, commonly known as Bitta Karate, a local nickname and a suffix for the brown belt he had in the judo karate sport. But soon by unleashing terror, he gained prominence in Pakistan-backed militant ranks. Bitta Karate was one of the first batch of local boys to cross over to Pakistan and receive training to use weapons. Their mission? to separate Kashmir from India. The local administration has not done your work, so you have become a friend of Hindus. And you started to go to the people of the people. Where did you go to the people of the people? I took the people of the people. I got the people of the people. Who was the people of the people? Ishwak Majid Wani. Ishwak Majid Wani was the one to take Bitta to Pakistan. Training lasted for a few weeks, where he was blindfolded and moved across different terror camps. वो हमें मतलब इधर से सिखाते थे। जब भी आप किसी का मर्डर करते थे, तो क्या हमेशा इशाक मजीद वानी का आर्डर होता था? तब करते थे या आपने मर्जी से भी कर सकते थे? नहीं, आपने मर्जी से मैं किसी को नहीं मारता था। ऊपर से आर्डर मिलता था, लीडर्स आर्डर देते थे कि अच्छा आर्डर दे किसी को मार दो, आप मार देते so this is also a bad thing with Gulami. No, Gulami is where? I said that when we join a girl, before we join, we have to get the help. This is the work. If not, you can go. Sitting in Pakistan, orders were sent to these terrorists in Kashmir, like Bitta Karate, to execute targets, specifically Hindu men with political influence. मासूम मासूम नहीं है मतलब वो बेगुनाहों को नहीं मारते इसको मतलब नहीं लेकिन आपको तो नहीं मालूम कि वो आदमी मासूम है कि गुनाहगार है नहीं आपको हुकुम दिया कि मार डालो आपने मार डाला अच्छा आपने कितने लोगों की जाने ली यानी आपने इतने सारे लोग मार डाले कि आपको ये भी नहीं याद कि आपने कित क्यों? ऐसा क्यों? ऊपर से आर्डर मिलता था मेरे साथ। अच्छा पहला पहला जिस आदमी को पहले पहले आपने जान से मारा वो कौन था? पहला मर्डर मैंने सतीश को मारा। सतीश। सतीश कौन? सतीश कुमार टिकू। टिकू कौन था ये? मुझे ऊपर से मतलब आर्डर दिया गया कि उसको हिट करो मैंने किया। कौन था ये? पंडित लड़का। हमेशा पिस्तौल से ही मारते थे या एक ही 47 से भी मारते थे एक ही 47 से हम स्केटो वालों पर एक्शन फायरिंग करते थे अच्छा और जब किसी एक आदमी को मारना होता था तो पिस्तौल से पिस्तौल से तो अकेले जाते थे कि दो तीन आदमी साथ होते थे मैक्सिमम मैं अकेला जाता था तो नकाब पहनी होती थी आपने नकाब के बगैर यानी लोग आपको देखते थे कि आप हैं जो जान से मार रहे हैं किसी को जी लोग पहचानते थे आपको तो लोगों ने आपको पुलिस के हवाले नहीं किया नहीं इसका मतलब लोग आपको तो लोग साथ देते थे अच्छा कभी ऐसा हुआ कि आपने जिस आदमी को मारना चाह ने कोशिश की लेकिन आप फेल कर गए नहीं जब भी आपने कोशिश की सफल हुए जी सफल हुए मैं जितना निशाना चाहता था लगा उधर बराबर पहुंच गया था On camera showing no remorse, Bitta Karate accepted they inflicted horror and torture on Kashmir's hapless Hindu minority. मिलन तो उनको ये चाहिए कि आप गवर्नमेंट से बातचीत करेंगे कि वो डकैती हो रही है रैपस हो रहे हैं क्या हो जाए रैपस हो रहे हैं बस रेप्स हो रहे हैं किसके? वो तो लड़कियों के रेप हो रहे थे। कौन कर रहा है? पता नहीं कौन कर रहा है। मतलब हो रहे हैं ना? बहुत जुल्म हो रहा है उधर। डेकेटी हो रही है। घर पर बट पैसे ले रहे हैं। मिलिटेंट्स। मिलिटेंट्स। और लड़कियों का रेप भी करते हैं मिलिटेंट्स। तब रेप भी कर रहे हैं। In 1990, the border security force arrested Bitta Karate, 
under the Public Safety Act, he was sent to prison. The charges against him were of murder and other grievous offences. And yet, 16 years later in 2006, Bitta Karate was released. In Jammu's Tada court, the judge stated, Allegations levelled against the accused are of serious nature and carry a punishment of death sentence or life imprisonment. But the prosecution has shown total disinterest in arguing the case. And therefore, Bitta was released. Bitta Karate, the face of terror and evidence also of how the establishment failed to ensure justice to his victims in 1990 Kashmir. Victims of terrorist Bitta Karate were not just statistics. These were innocent families destroyed forever, only for their religious Hindu identity. Bitta Karate accepted on camera that his first victim was a Kashmiri Hindu, Satish Tikku. 32 years later, the surviving family of Satish Tikku now speaks to India Today TV. This report coming up is from Jammu by our group editorial director, India Today Publishing, Raj Chengappa. Take a look and listen into what the family has to say now. The first murder was Satish Kumar. Satish. Satish Kumar. Satish Kumar Tikku. Tikku. Who was he? Pandit Larka. This on-camera confession by butcher of pundits, Bitta Karate, showing no remorse of unleashing terror in 1990. He shot dead Satish Tikku, a young trader with three bullets, point blank in Kashmir. 32 years later, Satish's brother-in-law, Pradeep Kaul, recounts the horrific incident. Bita Karate, alias Farooq Ahmad Dar, everybody knows him. He has himself admitted that the first man he shot, the first boy he shot, Hindu Pandit he shot was Satish Kumar Tiku. He killed him on 2nd of February 1990. You were in uh, Srinagar at that time or were you elsewhere? And I, I, I was in, uh, elsewhere in, in Odi at that time and I came to know about that. On, when BBC uh, said that he, uh, Satish Kumar Tikku, a, a, a prominent trader of Srinagar, has been shot. Srinagar that day has, had changed for me and for many other people. It was silence had, had descended on the, on the valley, on, on, on the Srinagar city. When we had to collect his ashes, we could not because we were shooed and we were, um, we were not allowed to go out of the lanes and somehow we managed to collect his ashes and then immerse them in, in, in Shadipur. Call clarifies Bitta and Satish were never friends but was a targeted killing, especially prominent vocal Hindus. So he was a target as a symbol of what? He was told, target as a symbol of um, Hindu aspirations and a, a prominent young youth icon of, this, of, of the community, a very vibrant man with word and gumption to help people around and create, um, help repair temples that were forgotten, that were in disrepair. India had the missing and then it. From his old home, Call managed to save rare Sharda manuscripts, 250 years old at least. We say Namaste Sharde Devi Kashmir Purvasani Tamaham Prarthi Nityam Vidya Gyanan Jadehame. O Goddess Sharda, we pray to you, please give us Vidya and Gyan. 5,000 years of continuous culture behind them. they were suddenly thrown into refugee camps. Original inhabitants of Habbakadal, Srinagar, call remembers the Mishriwala refugee camp in Jammu. After tents came these shanty rooms that you see. One room and eight, ten people huddled there, a kitchen by the side and people living there. Young people who were married, they also passed their days there. It was a 
And Jump no toilet? No toilet, again? no toilet. Toilet, toilet blocks were then built. Huh. Mercifully, toilet blocks were built. Very difficult situation. You can't put a middle class society, a highly educated society, to, to such a shame. It was shame, basically, and brutalizing the right. human humanity. Hmm. It was just brutalizing the humanity in the name of religion hmm. and separatism and exclusive. Hmm. The Kashmir Files, a movie released recently, brought with horrific detail of how the Kashmiri pundits were driven out of Srinagar and put, they had to flee to camps uh, in Jammu and other places of the country and the immense brutality that happened during that period where terrorists uh, went out of their way to uh, kill people in horrific manner. We are looking at three or four points that the film raises and trying an understanding what really happened during this period between 1990 when the Kashmir pundits were driven out and fled to other parts and what is currently happening now. Kema Kaul is a famous writer and mother of actor Bhasha Sumbali who essayed the role of Sharda Pandit in the Kashmir files. Oh, any I lost my brother because of this, because uh, he couldn't bear, he was, he had nothing and he ultimately got illness which he could which he, he couldn't survive and my uh, younger sister she got neuro problem usko sadma ho gaya usko dimak lag gaya ye iska she died thank god my mother had four children and otherwise kya ho jata all kashmiri pundits now expect the government to start rehabilitation and bring justice. Swikar karna chahiye. Parliament mein unko ek behas karna chahiye aur genocide ka jo bill hai usse pass karna chahiye. Na to pan Kashmir ka jo blueprint unhone diya hai ki kaise wo sab sarkar ko pata hai. Magar sarkar mein apne matlab wo hai thoda appeasement bhi hai, thoda aur bhi cheeze hain. Lekin wo chhod ke badi himmat dikha ke if they want to if they want a strong India, so they have to do it. There is no other option. The politicians, meanwhile, continue to deflect blame. If Farooq Abdullah is responsible, Farooq Abdullah is ready to be hanged anywhere in the nation. I'm ready to stand that trial. But don't blame people who are not res responsible. You are saying a truth commission should be a... What is yes. the kind of commission that you'd want? Would it investigate only the pundits or you're looking for an overall investigation of what Look, has happened? It is not only the pundits. What about the Sikhs in Chhati Singh Pora? What about the Muslims who died here? My MLAs, my um, small workers, my ministers who were blown up. We had to pick their meat from the uh, treetops. Such was the situation. Hmm. When they released Bitter Karate, who released him? Did National Conference government release him? Or was it government of India that released him? You've listened to all the interviews. You've seen what people have said. Behind me, I'm at Habakadal, and behind me are the houses of the pundits. You can see the disrepair that is there. They need to come back. Kash uh, Kashmir needs to heal again. The movie might have raised issues. So have the interviews. These need to be resolved. There needs to be a closure as what needs to be done. During this entire uh, program that we've done, we've examined the key questions. What really happened then? How did the Kashmir Pandit survive? Where are they now? And what we need to do, and as well as the government needs to do as a society, this is a tragic moment in India's history. This was the darkest period in India's democracy. We now need to heal. How do we go forward? That is the question that we all need to answer as a collective and bring this nation and bring peace again. Thank you very much. It's been more than 32 years since the Kashmiri Pandits were tortured, slaughtered and forced to leave the valley. The families of the Kashmiri Hindus were driven out of their homes and lands and they fought relentlessly for justice all these years. But the wait for justice is still on. You've listened to the narratives that happened among Kashmiri Pandits in Jammu, the plight that they faced, the horrific scenes that they had to witness, the loss of their dear ones and loved ones many of them brutally killed by terrorists, and how they fought and they came. We are now at Habakadal, the hub of where many Kashmiri pundits lived and had to flee during those terrifying months. 
We have come here to find out what really has happened in Kashmir. Harbhushan Pandita is 42 years old. Original resident of Khunmo, Srinagar, he now lives in Kashmir's transit accommodation for a job. Harbhushan ji, when did you come here? In 2010, sir, we came here. So, first we were sharing. First we were three girls in a room. Then we were two girls. Then we were sharing here. This set is a two-camper set. One was one family, the other was the other family. This is your kitchen. And first there were three or four families here? Yes, three or four families here. Okay. So, there is a kitchen, then there is a lobby, and there is a bedroom too? Yes, this is a bedroom. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, let's go. 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 This is the bedroom that they live in. With great difficulty in refugee camps, he earned a diploma from a technical institute and took up a job of technician and returned to Kashmir. But promotions are an obstacle. Now we have been 32 years old. How much progress has been done? We have been in 30-40 canals. We have been in Kesar. And Kesar is the most expensive here. Where are we from? But today we are doing a small job. And we are also thanking the government that we have got a little bit of food to eat. So what do we do? In our country, it was like this. I am in Shikapura, one of the settlements made for the Kashmiri Pandit by the then government, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and that continues to have at least over 300 Pandit families living here. They work with the government. This was the rehabilitation plan that the government had, apart from providing relief and, uh, you know, particularly rations and all for the people living in Jammu. They steadily started getting back to Srinagar through this method where they have government jobs that they would uh, live in these tenements that were built there. They were one-room tenements, and, uh, of course, unsatisfactory for a lot of the Kashmiris who had uh, Kashmiri Pandits, who had big houses in Srinagar, but it was a beginning. And as we can see, these are the entire houses. That is, it's in the outskirts of Srinagar, in, in Badgaon. Houses of minority Hindus are in deplorable condition. Doors and windows broken. A garbage dump in the compound where once there was a garden. Harbhushan with India Today crew revisits his old home, now in ruins. Once 12 bedroom house surrounded by saffron fields. पोषकरनाथ जी थे तो उसको गोली लग गई थी शाम में मिलिटेंट आए थे तो फिर हमें हम डर गए थे काफी उसके बाद हमें ट्रके भी नहीं मिली उसके बाद हमें ट्रके मिली तो पांच सात दिन हम हमारे पड़ोसी भी हमारे घर में रहे थे तो हम कठे खाना पीना वो ये उसके बाद कुछ दिन के बाद हमें ट्रके बेमना से मिल गई फिर तो फिर हम जम्मू शिफ्ट हो गए और जम्मू में कहाँ पे रहेगा कितने दिन के आप टेंटेड पे रहेगा या हमारे वहाँ पे एक मंदिर था वहाँ पे निरासा मुरालिया में उसका हॉल मिला था छह फैमिली को हमें एक हॉल में जगह मिल गई हरबूशन पंडिता इस बैक इन हिज होम फॉर वन डे इमेजिनिंग हाउ इट वुड हैव बीन हैड हिज पीपल नॉट बीन ब्रूटली that once was. With Raj Chengapa in Kashmir, Bureau Report, India Today. Thank you for watching this special telecast and remember that the closure for the Kashmiri Pandits will come only with the justice that will be delivered to them and that will mean one, the action against their perpetrators but eventually the rehabilitation of the Kashmiri Pandits back into the valley. Thank you. Take care.